Hey, it's Sam of Sam's Kitchen Chronicles, and today we're gonna make Scrapple. What the heck, you might ask, is Scrapple? We all know bacon and sausage, but many of us might not know what Scrapple is. And that's okay, because in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what it is. And if you already know, then you're in for a treat, because today we're making it from scrap. From scratch. Scrapple is eaten as a breakfast meatloaf in the mid-Atlantic states of the US, such as Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, and Virginia. As a native Delawarean, I'm proud to introduce this dish to you. So what exactly goes into Scrapple? Well, the name gives it away. Scraps. Pig scraps. All the parts of the pig that didn't quite make it into the sausage. Head meat, organs, pork hocks. They're all sort of mixed together into a pate and then made into a meatloaf. It's eaten as a breakfast meat, sort of like we do with bacon and sausage. But I like to think of Scrapple as the better sausage. Is it just me or do you ever get that heavy, greasy feeling inside after eating sausage? Ever wish you could have a breakfast meat that didn't quite do that? Well, here's Scrapple to the rescue. I think it'll do well in Korea. We eat gopchang, jokbal, somari gukbap, and all sorts of weird cuts of meat. I wish everyone could try Scrapple and love it as much as I do. I'm an unabashed proponent of Scrapple, and I won't rest until everyone has tried. Okay, Sam, let's reel it in. Right, moving on. For this recipe, we're using 1.5 kilograms of head meat, one and a half hearts, that's half a heart that's cooked, and another whole heart that's raw. In case you're wondering why they're different, I bought them from different vendors. 1.5 kilos of pork hocks, a little over a kilogram of liver, two onions, one and a half teaspoons of whole black peppercorns. For the spices, we're gonna need a teaspoon and a half of paprika, a teaspoon and a half of cayenne, and three teaspoons of dried sage. We're also gonna need cornmeal and buckwheat flour and we're gonna need two gallons of water for the broth. We're gonna start by throwing all the meat into a large stock pot, and we're gonna bring water to a boil. I'm gonna use my kettle trick to speed up the boiling process. Just keep adding boiling water until you got a nice boil going. You're gonna need two gallons of water in total. You might get some debris rising to the top. You can go ahead and skim that off. Then add the onions. If you're using whole black peppercorns, you can go ahead and throw that into the broth. If you're using ground black pepper, you're gonna throw that in at a later step. Now we're gonna leave this to boil on medium low heat for about two and a half to three hours. Let's go ahead and look inside. And look at that broth. Look how the color has changed, how all the marrow has released and the broth is now very milky. At this point, you're gonna remove all the meat and then strain the broth, because we're going to need it later. Now this part's a little tedious, but you have to go through the meat and pick out any bones from the head meat and the hocks. Get in there and get all the cartilaginous good stuff. Be sure not to do it too soon, because you might burn your hands. And look at that beautiful pile of scrap. Reserve five cups of broth for the scrapple. And we're gonna come back to this later. Meanwhile, you're gonna cut the meat and blend it in a food processor with the spices. You may have to do this in small batches. Bring the reserved broth to a boil and add 3 quarters of a cup of cornmeal. Cook on medium heat for 20 minutes while stirring occasionally. After 20 minutes, add half a cup of buckwheat flour to the mixture. Stir it in and cook for another 10 minutes. 
After 10 minutes, add the processed meat back to the pot and mix it all together. Add salt. Cook for another 10 to 20 minutes or until the mixture thickens a bit. Get a terrine mold or a loaf pan or something you can use to pour the mixture into uh, and line it with parchment paper. You can use square glass lock containers if you need to. Here's a little hack for you. You can take the parchment paper and cut into the corners so that it can fit better into your mold. This is a good hack for any baking you might do. You're welcome. Pour the scrapple mixture into the pan and let it rest until it cools. Then refrigerate overnight. To store it, just wrap it in plastic wrap and you can freeze it. To serve, just slice it and fry it for about 5 minutes on each side on medium heat. You can serve it with eggs and toast. I hope you enjoyed watching me make Scrapple, and I do upload videos regularly, so if you don't want to miss out, please subscribe. Tell me what you want to see me do on this channel. Alright, that's it for today, I'll see you next time.